Hello everyone. Welcome to revision class series of financial accounting 6. Here in this video again, I am going to revise on the chapter final accounts of banking companies. Here I have taken up a question where you have to prepare profit and loss account and balance sheet along with the relevant notes. This kind of question usually comes for 24 marks in the semester examinations. So now let's see the question. Following is the trial balance of Evershine Bank Limited as on 31st March 2016. They have given the items. First one, share capital, then premises less depreciation, money at call and short notice, bills discounted, fixed deposits, savings bank deposits, current account balances, then investments in government securities, interest and discount, reserve fund, cash in hand, loans and cash credits, term loans, Profit and loss account balance on 1 for 2015, cash with other banks, borrowings from other banks, rent received, unclaimed dividend, commission, cash with RBI, audit fees, interest paid on deposits, non banking assets, salaries, printing and stationery, sundry expenses. Then they have given the additional information. First one the bills discounted mature at an average date of 12 June 2016, including grace days. All bills were discounted at 10% per annum. Second one, provide rupees 20,000 for doubtful debts. Third one, bills for collection amounted to rupees 2 lakh. Fourth one, acceptances on behalf of customers amounted to 40,000. Create a provision of rupees 1 lakh for taxation. There is a liability on bills of exchange rediscounted amounting to 25,000. Directors proposed dividend at 10% for the year 2015-16. Interest accrued on investment was Rs. 23,000. Transfer 20% of profit to statutory reserve. Write necessary notes and prepare profit and loss account and balance sheet in the prescribed form. So these are the informations given in the question. So just like the previous questions, we have to first identify which item has to be shown under which note number. So as I said, in this question, you have to prepare both profit and loss account and balance sheet along with the relevant notes. So you have to identify which item should be shown in balance sheet and which item goes to the profit and loss account. Now coming to the first item, share capital. So it is an item which belongs to balance sheet. Okay, it should be shown in balance sheet. So it should be shown in note number one. Then premises less depreciation. It's a fixed asset. So it should be shown in note number 10 that is under fixed assets. Money at call and short notice. It should be again shown in note number seven. Okay, then bills discounted. It is a kind of advances. So it, you have to write in note number 9. The next one, fixed deposits, it should be shown in uh, note number 3 under deposits. Then savings bank deposits again, note number 3. Current account balances also is a kind of deposits you have to show in note number 3. Then investments in government securities, note number 8. Okay, Interest and discount. So this is an item which is relating to profit and loss account. So it should be shown in note number 13. Then reserve fund, it, uh, it should be shown in note number 2, that is under reserves and surplus. Then cash in hand, note number 6. Loans and cash credits, it's a kind of advance, so you have to write in note number 9. Term loans also kind of advance, you have to write in note number 9. Profit and loss account on 1 for 2015, it's an opening profit and loss account balance. Okay, So you have to take into consideration while calculating the total profit available for appropriation in the profit and loss account. Okay, the next one, cash with other banks, it comes in note number 7. Then borrowing from other banks, it should be shown in note number 4 under borrowings. Then rent received, note number 14. Okay, that is under other income. Unclaimed dividend, it should be shown in note number 5, that is under other liabilities and provisions. Then commission, if you see here, they have given credit balance. So it should be taken as in I mean commission received. So it should be shown again in note number 14 under other incomes. Then uh, cash with RBI, it should be shown in note number 6. Audit fees, you have to show in note number 16, that is under operating expenses. Then interest paid on deposits. Here, bank has paid the interest on deposits to the customer. So you have to show in note number 15 under interest expended. Non-banking asset, it should be shown in note number 11, that is under other assets. Okay, then salaries, printing and stationery and uh, sundry expenses. All these three items, it should be shown in note number 16 under other, uh, sorry, operating expenses. Then, let's see the adjustments now. 
Coming to the first adjustment, the bills discounted mature at an average date of 12 June 2016, which includes grace days. All bills were discounted at 10% per annum. Okay. Let me remind you, this is an adjustment which is relating to rebate on bills discounted. We have already discussed this concept along with few uh, basic questions, okay, which we usually uh, comes for six marks. Okay, in the same way here, we have to calculate what is the rebate on bills discounted. So, as I said in the previous video, to calculate the rebate on bills discounted, we need to have three information. The first one, what is the total value of bills discounted? The second one, what is the rate of discount or interest the bank has charged? And the third one, what is the number of days that lies between the beginning of next financial year and the maturity date? Okay, maturity date of all the bills. So now coming to the first information, as I said, let's see what is the total amount of bills discounted. Here it is given that the total amount of bills discounted is 2 lakh. Okay, the next one, rate of discount or rate of interest charged on the bills they have given 10% per annum. They have charged same percentage on all the bills. Then the average due date of all the bills they have discounted lie, I mean, falls on 12th June 2016. So now let us calculate the rebate on bills discounted. Okay. As I said, you have to calculate the number of days between the beginning of next financial year and the maturity date. The next financial year begins on 1 4 2016 and you have to calculate the uh, number of days till maturity date it, the all bills matures on 12th june 2016 so you have to calculate the number of days between these two dates coming to the month of april you have to take full month so there are 30 days then in the month of may there is 31 days then in the month of June, you have to consider only up to maturity date, that is 12, okay. So now when you add, you get 73 days, okay. This is the number of days for which the rebate has been received in advance, but it will be earned during the next financial year. So this one information we got to know, then bills, total amount of bills discounted is 2 lakh and the rate of discount is 10%. So now let's calculate what is the rebate on bills discounted at the end of the financial year? So how to calculate amount of bills discounted that is 2 lakh into rate of discount that is 10 percent divided by 10 divided by 100 into number of days that is 73 divided by 365. Okay, when you do the calculation, the amount comes to 4000. So this is the rebate on bills discounted at the end of the year. So now, what are the two adjustments or where these rebate on bills discounted has to be shown? Coming to the first adjustment, as I said, this amount has been received but it has not been earned during the current financial year. So, it should be deducted from total interest received. Okay, we have already come across this item here. That is, uh, interest and discount, total amount is 8 lakh. From that 8 lakh amount, we have to deduct 4000 rupees, that is, rebate on bills discounted. Again, one more time, it has to appear in note number 5 that is under other liabilities and provision because it is a kind of income which is received in advance. Okay, so this is about first adjustment. Coming to the second adjustment, provide rupees 20,000 for doubtful debts. Okay, so now again, this item has to appear twice. Once you have to show under provisions and uh, you know, uh, in note, uh, when you prepare the profit and loss account, you have provisions and contingencies. Under that, you have to show. It does not have any note number. So, you have to show in provisions and contingencies. Okay. Then, one more time, it has to come in note number 9. That is, they are doubting that so some amount they may not be able to recover out of the loans advanced to the customers. So, it should be shown in note number 9. So, two times it has to come. One once in provisions and contingencies in profit and loss account and one more time in note number 9 by way of deducting from total amount of advances. The next one, bills for collection amounted to rupees 2 lakh. Okay, there is an item which should be shown in footnote. It does not carry any note number. You have to just write that amount. Then acceptances on behalf of the customers amounting to 40,000. It is a contingent liability. It has to be shown in note number 12. Then create a provision of rupees 1 lakh for taxation. Okay, this is again 
we have to show this item twice once we have to show in provisions and contingencies in profit and loss account one more time we have to show in note number five that is other liabilities and provisions the next one there is a liability on bills of exchange rediscounted again it's a kind of contingent liability that liability may arise or it may not arise again it should be shown in note number 12 then directors propose dividend at 10 percent for the year 2015-16 okay it is a kind of proposed dividend so when we do the appropriation of profit in the profit and loss account we have to calculate this proposed dividend okay but how to calculate the proposed dividend is it 10 percent of the profit they have earned or what is uh, or the capital okay usually whenever we calculate the dividend the rate of dividend has to be calculated on paid up capital okay not on the profit as we calculate for reserve transfer uh, the when you calculate the dividend you it should always be on the paid up capital if you see here the total share paid up capital is 10 lakh so on that we have to calculate 10 percent okay that will be proposed dividend again it should come in uh, two places that is once under uh, appropriations in profit and loss account one more time it has to be shown under other liabilities and provisions in note number five then interest accrued on investment was rupees 23,000. So it should come in note number 13 that is under interest income. And one more time, uh, it is an outstanding income. It has to be received now. So it has to be shown one more time in note number 11 that is other assets. Then the last item transfer 20% of profit to statutory reserve. So here again uh, two effects will be there in the profit and loss account under appropriations you have to show this 20 percent transfer to the statutory reserve then one more time when you prepare the note number two that is reserves and surplus you have to add this amount to the old statutory reserve balance if it is given i don't think so it is given here so you can just show it as a one more item that is statutory reserve which you have transferred during the current year okay so this these are the adjustments you have to do in this question now let us see what is the solution as i said first we will show the notes relating to profit and loss account note number 13 is interest and discount okay so under that the total amount of interest and discount received was 8 lakh rupees to that we have to add the interest accrued okay which is outstanding which will be received during the next financial year so 23,000 we are adding from that rebate on bills discounted which will be earned during the next financial year that should be deducted so the remaining balance would come to 8 lakh 19,000 okay that is the total of note number 13 then note number 14 is relating to other income under that we have to show two items first one is rent received and the other one is commission received so total comes to two lakh rupees then note number 15 is relating to interest expended so there is an item that is interest paid on deposits amounting to three lakh ten thousand then note number 16 is relating to operating expenses under that we show audit fees salaries printing and stationery and sundry expenses so total of this shed I mean, note number comes to 2,34,000 and there is one more item it does not carry any note number that is provisions and contingencies and under that we have to show provision for doubtful debts 20,000 then provision for taxation 1 lakh okay the total provisions and contingencies comes to 1,20,000 now let's prepare profit and loss account so in the profit and loss account we have two sections first for income and the second one for expenditure under income we have to show note number 13 and 14 the total of which comes to 10 lakh 19 thousand so that is the total income then under expenditure we have to show note number 15 the note number 16 and provisions and contingencies the total of that comes to 6 lakh 64 thousand so this is the total income and this is the total expenditure when you take the you can write it as a and b okay in order to get the profit for the current year from the total income you have to deduct the expenditure okay so profit for the current year is three lakh fifty five thousand okay this is the difference between ten lakh nineteen thousand and six lakh sixty four thousand 
then to this current year's profit we have to add the opening profit and loss account balance which was given on 1 4 2015 amounting to 1 lakh 50000 so so when you add these two amounts you get 5 lakh 5000 okay this is the total profit available for appropriations during the financial year so now what are the appropriations we have first we have to transfer 20 percent of this profit to the statutory reserve so which comes to 71,000. then transfer to other reserve they have not given so you can just uh, skip that okay then proposed dividend as we discussed they have given 10 percent but 10 percent should not be calculated on this profit but it should always be calculated on the paid up capital okay here in this case paid up capital is 10 lakh rupees on that 10 percent comes to 1 lakh okay that is the proposed dividend okay so now the total appropriation they have not given any other appropriations so 1 lakh 71 thousand is the total appropriations from this balance I mean, if you deduct this balance from five lakh five thousand, you get a remaining balance of three lakh thirty four thousand. So this balance should be shown in the uh, balance sheet in note number two under reserve fund. Okay, reserves and surplus. So this is the balance carry forward to the balance sheet. Then let's see the notes relating to balance sheet. So now coming to note number one, we have to show share capital amounting to ten lakh. The note number two. We have to write reserves and surplus under that they have given reserve fund of 6 lakh statutory reserve which you have created now 71,000 then profit and loss account which is carried forward to the balance sheet is 3 lakh 34,000 so total amount comes to 10 lakh 5,000. Then note number 3 is with regard to deposits you have fixed deposits savings deposits and current account balance so it comes to total of 47 lakh. Then borrowing from the banks you have 8 lakh 50 thousand that is note number 4 then note number 5 is other liabilities and provisions under that we have to show unclaimed dividend rebate on bills discounted provision for taxation proposed dividend so total amount comes to 2 lakh 14 thousand then note number 6 is cash and balance with rbi we have to show cash in hand as well as cash with rbi total amount comes to 5 lakh 15 thousand then the note number 7 is cash or balance with other banks and money at call and short notice here we have two item cash with other banks 146000 then money at call and short notice is 6 lakh together it comes to 746000 then note number 8 is investments so under that we have to show investments in government securities then note number 9 is with regard to advances we have to show here loans cash credits and overdrafts so here out of this total amount advance we have to deduct the provision for doubtful debt so remaining balance would come to 31 lakh 80 thousand there is one more item that is bills discounted amounting to 2 lakh so total of note number 9 that is advances is 33 lakh 80 thousand then note number 10 is with regard to fixed assets under that we have to show one item that is premises less depreciation amounting to 5 lakh 65 thousand then note number 11 is other assets under that we have to show non-banking assets amounting to 40,000 then outstanding interest amounting to 23,000 so total of this note is 63,000 the note number 12 that is contingent liabilities under that we have to show again two items that is acceptances on behalf of customers 40,000 then liabilities uh, for bills rediscounted 25,000 so total amount of uh, note number 12 that is contingent liability is 65,000 so these are the notes which are relating to balance sheet then let's prepare the balance sheet now in the balance sheet we have two sections first section we write capital and liabilities that is from note number one to note number five then you have second section to write the assets okay then after that we are showing the footnote under that again we have two items that is contingent liabilities and bills for collection okay now coming to the uh, capital and liabilities we have already totaled all these note numbers okay note items so the whatever the uh, total you have already done in the previous calculation the straight away you can write that total here okay capital we had got total of 10 lakh rupees the same thing is written here reserves and surplus total was 10 lakh 5 thousand deposits 47 lakh borrowings 8 lakh 50 thousand other liabilities and provisions 2 lakh 14 thousand so when you add from 
uh, note number 1 to note number 5 you get 77,69,000 so that is called total of capital and liabilities then we have note, uh, the sec uh, next section that is assets so here we have to write from note number 6 to note number 11 so we have note number 6 total is 5,15,000 note number 7 7,46,000 note number 8 25 lakh note number 9 33 lakh 80 thousand note number 10 5 lakh 65 thousand note number 11 63 thousand so when you add from note number 6 to note number 11 it is the total asset so now when you check here total of asset is equal to total of liability side okay then below this we are showing uh, two fourth notes under that first one is contingent liability total is 65,000 then bills for collection in this question they have not given any item so this is the solution for present question look for similar questions in the question bank if you have any doubt you can contact me thank you for watching